Hi, my name is Oscar Pedreira, and in this video, I'm going to present our work with title Reverse Nearest Neighbor Centrality Measures and Local Intrinsic Dimensionality. And this is a joint work with Stefan Marshall Mayet and Edgar Chavez. So, in similarity search symmetric spaces, the performance of an index measures its capacity to accelerate the search when solving queries. And there are many benchmarks to evaluate index performance experimentally. However, we know that indexes don't have the same performance in all the data sets. So we say the indexability of a data set is a measure of the potential benefits we will obtain in terms of search cost if we index the collection. The indexability of a data set depends mainly on the distance distribution. If all distances are too concentrated around the average distance, then the pruning criteria of most indexes will just fail in many cases, so the discarding capacity of the index is going to be reduced. This situation is known as the course of dimensionality, and in some spaces uh, the situation is so extreme that the performance of the indexes is close to that of a sequential search, so it doesn't make any sense at all indexing that, uh, that collection. The concept of intrinsic dimensionality was originally studied as a property of the entire data set, but we can also consider the intrinsic dimensionality locally in the neighborhood of, uh, of an object and use this information to exploit local subspace structures. The local intrinsic dimensionality can be measured as the increase in the density of objects in a ball as we increase its radius. So different works have studied the, the concept of local intrinsic dimensionality and, and also different ways of estimating uh, this local dimensionality and some of its potential applications. In this work, we propose that this information can also be used for improving the index performance uh, in data sets where we can find regions or subsets with different levels of indexability. So the basic idea is that the indexability is not uniform in all the space. Uh, we think that a data, a data set can be decomposed in subsets of different levels of indexability. Some of them can be highly indexable, that is, all indexes will show a good performance on those subsets, and hopefully these subsets represent most of the data sets and most queries will happen here. However, we think that we can also have subsets with lower levels of indexability, parts of the space that suffer from the curse of dimensionality, so any index will have a poor performance in these uh, subsets of the space. And again, hopefully, this should be a small part of the entire data set. So partitioning the space into different subsets of different levels of indexability could be used to index different subsets in different ways, depending on this indexability. So the idea is that in the indexing phase, a first step would be assessing the local dimensionality for all objects and then using this information to partition the dataset into subsets of decreasing indexability. Then we could uh, try to index each of these subsets with indexes adapted to uh, its characteristics or to its levels of indexability. So, for example, we could think about indexing hard subsets with approximate indexes, which are also going to be cheaper in terms of construction time and, uh, and in the additional time we need to, to process the, the index itself. So, the idea is that after creating these different indexes for different subsets of the, of the space, of the collection, we would uh, query every index in parallel to then recompose the answer to the, uh, to the query. So in the proposal of this work, our idea is to partition the, the data set 
by creating low dimensional subspaces. And for that purpose, we use the notion of centrality to incrementally peel a data set into layers with similar centrality in the reverse near neighbor graph. So to measure the indexability of each object, we create a near neighbor graph and then we index layers of objects that have similar values for uh, two centrality measures uh, that we are considering on this graph. But before computing those centrality measures and regarding the construction of the near neighbor graph, uh, in our previous work, the indexability of each object was measured uh, based on its centrality in the half space proximal graph. However, constructing that graph takes quadratic time, and in this work, we considered that we could build an approximate graph, that this would be cheaper, and that even with an approximate graph, it would provide us with the information we need to measure the indexability of each object according to its centrality in the graph. So we decided to create an approximate near neighbor graph using an approximate index, in this particular case, the hierarchical navigable small world index. And once we have built the, the near neighbor graph, we have worked with two centrality measures. First, we considered the number of reverse near neighbors of each object, that is the number of objects for which u is among its k nearest neighbors. And the second measure was the number of mutual uh, near neighbors of each object, that is the, the measure for the object uh, u would be um, the number of objects b for which u is in the set of the nearest neighbors and b is in the set of the near neighbors of, of u. So regarding the experiments, we worked with uh, three collections of feature vectors from images. Uh, working with these data sets allowed us to work with real data while still controlling the explicit dimension of each space. So in particular, we worked with the collection colors, which is part of the metric space library. And in this collection, each image is represented by 112 features. We worked with SIFT, where each image is represented by 128 features. And finally, we also worked with uh, the collection Deep Features, where each image is represented by 4096 uh, features. Although these collections have different sizes, we selected uh, 100,000 objects from, from each of them. And for each collection, we partitioned the data set into subsets of size 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and so on, in increasing and decreasing values of the centrality measures. And after creating these uh, partitions, we then indexed each of the subsets with the spatial approximation tree. So we could evaluate the performance of this index in each of the subsets. So in these two figures, we can see the results for the collection colors. The red line shows the performance of the index in randomly generated subsets for its, uh, for its size. So as you can see in this axis, we are reflecting the sizes of the subsets, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and 90,000. And the green, blue, and orange lines uh, show the performance we obtained when the subsets were created by selecting the objects in increasing and decreasing values of the centrality measures. And this figure shows the results for the number of reverse near neighbors. And in this figure, we show the results for the number of mutual near neighbors. And one of the variables that can influence the results is the value of k when we are building the near neighbor graph. So we tried different values for k. So more specifically, we worked with k equals to 10, 512, and 1024. 
So, as we can see in the figures, the centrality measures are able to detect objects with high and low indexability. For example, uh, the performance of the index for the 10,000 harder objects, according to the number of mutual reverse uh, near neighbors, is above a uh, 45% of the database. In these figures, we're expressing the, the cost of the search as the percentage of the database we have to explore during the, the processing of the query. So as I said, the, the performance of the index in the hardest uh, objects is above uh, 45%, and the performance uh, in the easier objects is below a 20%. And in these results, we can also see some irregularities, which means that the measures uh, are not perfect when predicting the, the indexability of the objects. These two figures uh, show, uh, show similar results uh, for the collection SIFT. In this case, although the number of features is similar to that of colors, the performance of the index ranges from around a 40% in the 10,000 easiest objects to around a 90% in the hardest objects. Okay, so we can see that this result happens with both measures, with both the number of reverse neighbors and the number of mutual neighbors. And another difference we can see in the results for this collection is that they are more regular than in the case of colors, than, than, than in the previous collection. And finally, we included deep features in the experiments because it's a, it's a, a really hard collection in terms of, of index performance. In, the, in this case, the performance of the index is always close to that of a sequential search. But we can still see that these centrality measures are still able to detect easier and harder objects. So for example, in this case, the performance of the index with the hardest objects is close to 100%, that is that the performance of the index is almost that of a sequential search, and the performance of the index with the easiest objects is not, it's not a good performance in any case, but it goes from 100% to around a 90%, in this case between a 90 and a 92, and around a 92 in this case. And another interesting result we can see in these experiments is that while the number of mutual neighbors can show better results in predicting the indexability of the objects, its performance doesn't depend, uh, does depend it depends on, on the value of k we used when building the, the near neighbor graph. And this doesn't happen uh, when we are using the number of reverse neighbors as the centrality measure. So basically the idea is that the, the number of reverse near neighbors doesn't depend that much on the value of k, and the, uh, the results of the number of mutual near neighbors can be slightly better, but they do depend on the value of k. So to conclude this presentation, we have a presented experimental results that show that centrality measures based on the near neighbor graph can be used to predict the, the indexability of the objects and to use this information to partition the space into subsets of different levels of indexability. We have also shown that uh, this is possible even if we are working with an approximate near neighbor graph. And well, future works includes extending the, the experimental evaluation to to other collections of, of different nature. In this case, we have uh, worked only with feature vectors from images. We would like to, to repeat experiments with uh, collections of a different nature and also with uh, other indexes. In, in this uh, work, we have only used the, the spatial approximation tree because it's an index with a good performance and which doesn't uh, need us to adjust any parameter. So, uh, it's uh, it's a nice index for, for these kind of experiments, but we would like to, uh, to extend the, the experimental evaluation to other types of indexes.
and future work also includes addressing uh, how this how we can index these different subsets how we can treat them with different indexes depending on their level of indexability so thank you very much for for your attention and well, if you have any questions about uh, the work we have presented uh, we will have a, an opportunity to talk live at, uh, at the conference uh, uh, or we can also do it by email if the schedule of the conference doesn't fit your, uh, your time zone. Thank you very much. Goodbye.